Hello, my name is Andrew Booth. I work at the University of Sheffield and this presentation is entitled Lean and Mean or Frankenstein Transforming Search Strategies for Rapid and Systematic Searching and it's available in two parts. In the first part I'm going to introduce the problem that's caused by seeking to meet time pressures when searching uh, amid a uh, great volume of literature and in the second part I'm going to think about where that takes us in terms of uh, as a profession. So um, the theme of the uh, conference for which this uh, presentation has been prepared is on transformation and it seems to me we're at a critical stage where we have to decide whether we're going to persevere with accepted systematic review methodologies but under time pressures having to cut corners without really knowing what their implications are or whether we're going to develop new ways, new philosophies of searching that could be seen as being lean and mean and efficient. I want to start off by giving an award to information specialists. For over 25 years we've been diligently and painstakingly conducting systematic, comprehensive and exhaustive searches in support of the systematic review process. But this award is in harmony with Archie Cochrane and his famous award um, that stimulated the Cochrane collaboration. This award is the wooden spoon because we can criticise ourselves for not really making best use of our knowledge on efficient literature searching. So it's time for all of us to, to transform. We need to pursue a dialogue moving from how many databases is enough which has been the preoccupation of systematic review searching to how few databases is enough so that we're able to give a, a more critical view of the yield from databases and th this is important in the context of efficiency reducing research waste and reducing information specialist and reviewer time there is a lot that we don't no on this subject. If you were to ask a typical information specialist, uh, these would be the sort of questions that they would be continuing to grapple with. How many databases are enough? How long should we search for? What is an optimal size results set? Indeed, what is an optimal yield of potentially relevant references? So for every hundred search re results, how many relevant references for possible inclusion in a, in a review should we be able to find? And then more widely, how should we apportion time between the topic searches, which are relatively easy to uh, execute and to document, and complementary methods, which often defy documentation, are very time-consuming. And linked to this is what, what is the framework for evaluation? What are the best metrics for evaluating our search strategies? Turning our attention first of all then to how many databases are enough. Increasingly we're seeing uh, a consistent picture that suggests that a limited number of databases contribute to the included studies in a systematic review. Now we have to be very wary here because there is a sense that this can become a self-fulfilling prophecy that uh, if uh, people only search a limited number of uh, d databases then when reporting uh, their yield um, the yield from these databases can look uh, relatively um, uh, good. But what we're talking about here are well conducted systematic reviews and then an audit of where the studies come from. But if we are to make um, good and sensible use of the knowledge base, then an improved search of a core database, for example Medline, um, plugging some of the, the gaps that um, uh, could be um, affected by uh, suboptimal searching, um, would allow us to retrieve more additional studies than simply repeating our searches across a diminishing return of uh, progressively less uh, uh, relevant databases. Uh, and this uh, uh, is a sound observation because it's been observed that uh, one of the main purposes of searching multiple databases isn't actually in finding uh, new um, records, it's actually increasing our chance of retrieving records that were already present in a previous database we've searched but for some reason our search strategy missed it and so the argument is by using different terminologies across different databases we will eventually retrieve um, one copy of a duplicate record. 
um, but um, we have to acknowledge that there's no intrinsic value in a long list of databases. Um, it has become something of a, a contest to see uh, who can uh, um, uh, produce the, the greatest list of sources. Um, but it's not very difficult to produce a list of sources um, if the expectation is a very poor yield from those sources. So in support of this idea that a, a limited number of um, uh, databases can su uh, sustain a large number of included studies, um, here are an, a number of uh, contributions to the literature. Um, the study here by uh, Halliday um, describes how uh, using uh, sources beyond PubMed had a very modest impact on the results of um, treatment studies. And uh, in response to this uh, article, I replied um, with uh, an unpublished uh, study, um, some data uh, that I'd found from looking at a sample of 50 different reviews across 10 different subject areas uh, to look at where um, actual records had come from. This is very easy to um, to duplicate as a methodology, um, but a consistent pattern has emerged that that where Medline is uh, the database of choice, um, that uh, yield of included studies can be as high as 85%. And, and, and this uh, raises the prospect that um, over the years we've, if you like, written a blank check for our review teams um, that we've uh, really uh, undertaken to provide them with as many search results as um, an unspecified uh, quality of search um, can provide. And so in effect we're saying I promise to pay my review team as many hours as it takes to supply them with thousands of useless records across dozens of irrelevant databases until my mental health and their eyesight fails. So clearly we, we need to um, give a more consideration to what we're trying to achieve and what a measure is of a satisfactory systematic review or rapid review search. And I'd like you to just reflect at this point. I'd like you to uh, just think about um, uh, for a 12-month review, what would be an acceptable total number of records to be screened by a review team? So, so what sort of numbers do you have as a benchmark in your mind for a 12-month review um, for uh, passing on to a review team? So what would be the size of your reference management database? And then uh, turning it round to yield, on average, how many references would you expect to have to read in order to find one relevant reference? And uh, here we're meaning a, a, a re reference that uh, until um, ex inspection at full text um, could, uh, 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 could prove to be uh, potentially useful. Perhaps you'd like to uh, pause the video at this point and, and uh, have some time to reflect on this before um, moving on to uh, uh, some, some of the findings that I'm going to present. Just while you're thinking about this point, um, just confess really that um, our uh, projections of how much information specialist input uh, is going to be required uh, tend to be very crude. They tend to be in blocks of days and so, for example, we might estimate 10 to 15 days for information specialist input on a 12-month project. And what we've found is the number of days bears little relation to the final scale of a review. Probably more typically we would um, spend more time than we allow in a budget, um, but uh, there will be occasions when we're pleasantly surprised by the um, uh, small scale of the literature. But if we get um, uh, it wrong, if our calculations are incorrect, it's our organisation that bears the deficit. And, and it makes us reflect, is it acceptable to offer different levels of, of uh, comprehensiveness, uh, so different expectations as far as us as the searcher, so you could have different searchers in the same organisation with different benchmarks, as far as the employer is concerned, and, and what about the funder um, who doesn't have any idea um, what thoroughness of search they're going to be getting. 
and this is where we bring in some data. It's been around for quite some time, but it hasn't really received the attention it should do. Across 94 systematic reviews, uh, Sampson and colleagues uh, were able to show that uh, uh, the number needed to retrieve uh, was 33. So um, finding one relevant reference um, it within every 33 uh, references. Uh, so that's a, a number needed to uh, re uh, retrieve um, of uh, three for every hundred. And if we then turn our attention to the average number of references per review, then uh, these are typically in the region of just over 2,000. Now many of you will be looking at this figure of 2000 and will be um, amazed at, at how uh, small this is. Um, we have got into a mentality of conducting huge um, searches with tens of thousands of results. And so this made me do uh, a very quick uh, and dirty uh, desktop evaluation. I um, looked at uh, 20 systematic reviews retrieved from Google Scholar. The reason for using Google Scholar was um, because I wanted to find a mention in the full text of an information specialist or a librarian so that we can't uh, uh, exclude these reviews and saying oh, these were done by a, a single clinician or by two clinicians without inf any information input. And what we see is a tremendous range of the expectations of the number of records that one would be presenting and have to sift through for a review. We see figures uh, starting as low as 107, uh, going up to 33,000. So this is a, a tremendous range of expectations that we're creating around a review. And this consequently results in a very great range of um, uh, numbers needed to retrieve from something like um, uh, six records in every hundred to um, uh, one record in every three, three and uh, a bit thousand. So armed with this data we start to normalize or create some expectations about uh, what uh, result sets might look like and clearly uh, we would want to be positioning in a place that um, uh, has uh, minimized some risk of missing uh, relevant references uh, but doesn't uh, simply uh, propagate uh, tens of thousands of references uh, just in the pretense that this is going to be a better search. In fact, we have to think that the more uh, uh, references you present to a review team, the, the more you're in, uh, enhancing the, the noise, the likelihood that they're going to actually miss uh, relevant references during the screening process. So you're actually making the task uh, worse rather than better. So let's think how we might reconfigure a reference interview. So. Uh, a researcher comes in, I'd like a literature search for a systematic review, and you reply, well sure, how many included studies are you anticipating? And in response you say, well, about 10, I should think. And then you, you say, well, anything less than 350, a number needed to read of 35 references, could be inadequate. So I'm, I would suggest for a bare minimum that we aim for at least giving you a result set of 500 references. Uh, then uh, the researcher comes back, I think the funder would want more than a bare minimum, what are my other options? Uh, well my next band would be over a thousand, a number needed to read of a read of hundred references for every relevant one. Or I could give you a very cautious search of ten thousand, which means you look, look through a thousand in order to find relevant. Ah, well ten thousand rec records, that would be three weeks solid sifting and doubled if we're doing double screening. So can you design me a strategy for somewhere between a thousand and three thousand records? Now far, far fetched as this may seem, this, this technique is already used by a, a very high profile international health technology agency. So the modest proposal which I want to conclude part one with, and which I'll return to again in part two, is could we negotiate levels of comprehensiveness around, for example, gold, silver and bronze um, uh, efficiencies, and could we present these as different options, asking a review team to select from them? And here are some references that I've uh, referred to. 
Thank you for your attention. I look forward to seeing you in part two.